everyone. Welcome to the next in a series of Temple Chats. This month, I was lucky enough to talk to Rian Halford, who is an Associate Director here at Temple, working in our environmental management and consents team. She has nearly 20 years experience working in the industry and has just rejoined Temple coming back from maternity leave. I chat to her about some of her favourite projects, how the industry has changed and what's it like coming back from maternity leave. Enjoy! Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, do you want to just give us a little introduction of yourself and what you do at Temple? Sure. Hi there. Lovely to be here today. Um, yeah, my name is Rhian Halford and I work as an Associate Director at Temple Group. Um, and I look after the Environment and Consents Department. Amazing. Thank you very much. Um, what made you want to work in the environmental sector? That's a really good question, Carla. Um, I've had a real passion for geography, being outdoors. Um, I've come from, um, I sort of grew up in a very sort of rural part of the country and I've always just loved the outdoors and been fascinated by nature and how it interacts with sort of the um, society and things like that. So um, I always wanted to know those processes um, in the geography process. So yeah, I've always nice. been passionate about it. Whereabouts did you grow up? Um, in South Wales. Right oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Great part of the world. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so looking back there, so you know you went to university, you did sort of, you said you were interested in geography and stuff. Mm -hmm. Has your career progressed? Um, in the way that you intended since leaving university and sort of entering the workforce? Yeah, that's a, another good question. Um, it hasn't at all, to be honest. I really didn't think I was going to work in the construction sector. I always wanted to work in environment and sustainability, um, but you know, to be thinking I'd be working on site um, and in sort of, you know, being fortunate enough to work on lots of amazing construction projects in the UK, it's been really great. So, um, yeah, I've been very privileged to be able to work in different sectors as well along that industry. Amazing, thank you. Um, so you said you sort of, not necessarily the career path that you thought you would be on. Um, so I suppose, because you, I don't want to say you've been doing it for a long time now, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what sort of advice would you give those um, thinking about starting out in the environmental sector, you know, maybe even going into construction, mm -hmm. um, sort of any things that you sort of would say that you, you've learned from as well, I guess? Sure. Um, yeah, I think basically um, don't be afraid to throw yourself into different industries. So um, I started off working um, for sort of the highway sector. Um, I didn't really think, I didn't know anything about motorways or how to build motorways, but it, I learned so much in that process. So I think, um, you know, once you've uni left university or if you've had an apprenticeship or however you know, route of education you took, um, throw yourself in different industries because there's loads of different skills that you'll pick up along the way, um, which you may not 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 know initially from starting off yeah that sounds really good um so it's actually really good thing for me um that <laughs> we've just welcomed you back from maternity yes, leave that's right so welcome back um <laughs> Thank you. but i suppose like like any one woman coming back from maternity it's it's probably been different and interesting but what has been your biggest challenge um since coming back from maternity leave yeah i mean yeah this is my fourth week so it is very very fresh at the moment wow. um but i think <laughs> I was surprised actually how, how challenging it can be, um, you know, juggling lots of different things from um, home life to work. And I think um, for me, I always wanted to give 100% in both areas and I felt as if now I can't really because I have to balance those, those two aspects up. Um, so it's, it's constantly balancing, constantly trying to do as much on one, one thing um, as opposed to the other as well. But I think having a supportive sort of company who um, you know, provides that, that support and that, that advice when you do come back in the workforce is really important and really helpful. And some really awesome colleagues as well, I'm of guessing. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> that always helps. <laughs> Great. So kind of, obviously, you know, you were saying you're coming back from maternity leave. Um, mm -hmm. I would say the construction industry notoriously is very male-dominated. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think you, or what do you think can be done for women in the profession? And do you have any advice for other women just sort of thinking, that's not for me, or, you know, anything that you would sort of say to your younger self, maybe, who would sort sure. of view the profession as sort of very, very male-dominated? Yeah, I think a lot has happened, to be honest, over the last 10 years with STEM. I think, you know, getting women into engineering, into the construction sector through those type of um, disciplines has really been helpful. But I think it needs to start right from primary school. So, you know, um, 
usually people in um, children in primary school make up what they want to do um, by the, the age of six. So, you know, having more influences, um, people from the construction industry who are female coming into schools would really help that. But also, I think, retention for women in the workforce. I think um, I'm lucky with my clients who are in the construction industry completely understand family life, for example. So I think it's just um, breaching that sort of subject and um, asking them, you know, about flexible working, about hybrid working and different patterns that you can do. Um, because usually 99% of the time they, they you know, com completely see your value to the company and they want to support you in, in sort of making that happen. So... Yeah, no, that's, that's, that sounds like a great idea. Okay, so Rian, who has been your biggest influence in your career? Yeah, that's a really good question. There's been so many um, influences, to be honest, throughout my career. But I think the one person who really stands out is when I worked on the Crossroad project. Um, there was a lady PM called Linda Miller, um, who was absolutely amazing. She was really sort of determined. She really brought all the workforce together. Um, she was a strong leader, but also had a lot of empathy. And I think, you know, she would probably be my biggest influencer because she was determined and hardworking and wasn't afraid to take risks, which I thought was great. Awesome. That sounds really good. Actually, that brings me really nicely onto my next question, <laughs> talking about risks there. So what um, has been your biggest challenge um, in, in your career so far? Um, I think it's basically been trying to embed sustainability into the construction industry which sounds quite a, a large sort of topic like a area but really trying to sort of embed environmental sustainability and not for it to be like an add-on um, sort of service so again working on the Costello project um, I did a lot of work with the supply chain and tier one contractors to try and um, sort of you know Look, look at um, environment the same as health and safety, for example, really sort of embedded in the DNA of, of the workforce and the industry. So I think that was quite challenging, but we had a lot of success um, with sort of supplier league tables across the Crossroad project, um, which again really helped to accelerate the sustainability journey. Amazing. Um, so of all those things you've just been talking about, all the projects you said you've worked on, do you have a favourite amongst those? Oh, that's difficult. Um... I think I have a couple of favourites. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but the more the merrier. Um, I think um, the first one I ever worked on um, after graduating was the Hindhead Tunnel on the A3, and that was just, again, a real eye-opener. Um, I hadn't, you know, again, I hadn't worked in that type of industry before, and I, I met a lot of, you know, a lot of colleagues, and I had a lot of support there, and, and, and the actual tunnel we built was um, made out of sort of reusable um, materials, which, which was wow, amazing. I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Mm. Um, but then I think the, 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 my, my favourite and also the biggest challenge has been Crossrail, just because um, I was there for a, a few years and I really sort of felt as if environmental sustainability had, you know, the, it was sort of embedded towards the end. So that, that was really interesting. Wow, that sounds really good. And again, that brings me perfectly on to the next, <laughs> next question. Um, what's the best thing about your job, like your favourite thing that you, lo you like to do? Sure. Um, I think... It's, yeah, I think it's meeting new people, meeting people from different sort of facets of, organ of the organisation. I've worked with designers, consultancies like, like Esther Temple, um, and also sort of construction teams and engineers. And through that, I think it's sort of the problem solving that has to happen on large construction industry. You know, we, we get a design, but how do we actually build it? So it's all of that sort of problem solving, working together as a team to make it happen and also have that sort of um, immense pride, really, um, when the project is actually finished and is, and, uh, you know, and is up and running. So, um, yeah, there's lots of different things, but I think meeting people, but also working at a particular complex problem, and making yeah. it happen. It must be so nice to actually look back on on things and just think, I helped with that. You yes, know, I, I made exactly. that happen. I made, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that yeah. sounds really good. Exactly. Um, what would you most like to see happen in the industry? Um, I think that the environment and sustainability 
sec sector of any industry really has come on a long way. Um, I studied sort of geography, climate change models um, nearly 20 years ago now, and they were very much of a, um, a new sort of novel idea. And we had to convince a lot of people and scientists throughout the world really to, that you know climate change was a was a problem. I think now that that's very widely recognised, that's also then flowed through into construction industry. So. Um, before, um, I you know we always had to sort of convince colleagues, convince clients that environment sustainability was important. And I think now they understand that it is. But I think that one step further for the industry would be that it's, you know there's no question, there's no monetary um, problems or budgets around environment sustainability. It's very much a key part of making that particular project sort of successful. And also being a flagship project um, for you know, you know, uh, green infrastructure, green projects in the UK, um, I think that would be fantastic for it to be sort of more embedded um, and more of a seamless sort of transition. And also I think in making the industry a little bit more diverse, um, the construction industry is still, I would say, quite archaic um, and it has a decline in population really. Um, we know we need to get sort of young, um, diverse sort of population involved in the construction industry and that it's not always about just going on site in all sorts of weather, yeah. um, pouring concrete. There's so many other skills that can happen from sort of engineering, from procurement skills, from environment sustainability. So, um, you know, it has a diverse sort of um, a breadth really of yeah. audience that it can reach out to. Yeah, I guess it's, it comes down to sort of the way that it's sort of communicated as well and just getting mm. rid of all those sort of old Stigmatisms. stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so watching the future holds for the environment and sustainability industry as a whole? Um, as a whole, I think, you know, I think there's a lot of global anxiety actually at the moment. Um, you know, the, the amount that sort of climate change is accelerating due to anthropogenic activity is startling and much more than those climate change models predicted. So um, I think there, there's a lot more awareness, though, around it, which is great. And I think what we need to do as environmental specialists is empower those um, to be able to, you know, just do one, one small thing for the environment that does actually build up. But I think we really need to get to those policy makers and get all the countries involved. Um, you know, America and China really need to be on board with this for it to be a success worldwide. Um, but I think it's, it's sort of on a on an upward trajectory. I just hope that it's not too late for it, and uh, you know, we we uh, the, the sort of you know, f future for it basically. No, oh, that's been really good. Thank you so much for your Thank time, you. Julian. It's been really fascinating finding out more about you and your career. Um, Thank you. And let's let's talk again soon. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Carla. Cheers. <laughs> Bye.